All right. So we're on week three for the Team Boom Diamond calls. Uh, for those of you that haven't made the first two, we're listening to the recordings from a legend, a living legend, Craig Holiday, who built a multiple seven-figure income business with network marketing. And today's topic is how to get a coach started right. So take notes, and then it's about 35 minutes, so we'll have 20 minutes at the end to chat. I'll get this thing started. We're recording. My topic today is, I think, a very important one. Uh, if I can think of two things that have really been uh, the main thrust of what I've, I've seen out in the, out in the um, field since I've been working with, with Team Beachbody for over a year now, is there's two major things. One is getting sto coaches started correctly, which, which will be our topic for next week. And then secondly is managing our time. And I think that's a big issue for all of us. You know, busy people are busy because they have DNA, because they have purpose, because they have things that they want to do in their lives. So you're rarely going to bring people in your business that aren't busy people. People, but people that aren't busy don't do much more. They just get by with just enough in their life. So I always told people when I was looking for an opportunity to bring people into my business and, and to sponsor them and to work with them and help train them, I was looking for people that were busy. If someone said, I'm so busy right now, I said, you're the perfect person for this. But one of the things that we face in being busy is that a lot of times we don't manage our time correctly. We, we just, we, our lives are out of control. And, you know, a lot of you have full-time jobs. A lot of you are, um, you know, full-time dads, full-time moms, full-time jobs um, with all the other responsibilities that we have in our lives. And with that in mind, all of a sudden somebody shows you a business like Beachbody and you're thinking, it's, oh my gosh, where would I ever find time to do something more than what I'm doing? But anytime someone says that, that they don't have time, that it, I always correct them and say, oh no, you always have time. It's just that you don't manage your time. And so that's what I want to talk about today. First, I want to say this, the way you live your hours is the way you live your days. The way you live your days is the way you will live your life. And I think that's true for every one of us. You know, the way we live every hour of our day will control the way our, our days look. The way our days look is where, the way our life looks. Because pretty soon we have 365 days and a year's over. And that means we have to start over again. We've lost those 365 days. I've never seen anybody be able to go back and get hours. You know, go back and get days from the past. Those are canceled out. You know, you don't get redos for those hours. So what I want to talk about today and challenge us with today is that we take control, start to take control of the hours of our life. You know, time is never an excuse. You know, if we don't manage our time, we don't accomplish what we want. The most successful people that you know, the most successful people in this country have exactly the same amount of hours a week that you do. And that's 168 hours. None of us have any more than that. None of us have any less than that. But we need to learn something. And you're going to hear me talk about it today. We need to learn to be where we are. Be where we are. And that's a term that you're all going to need to grab a hold of. Because with our lives out of control, we can never be where we are. We are always somewhere else when we're someplace. And what does that mean? That means like if you're building your business and you're at a little league game and you're, you went to watch your son play baseball, you're sitting there on your text, texting all your coaches from Beachbody, trying to see if you can get a new coach in, working on social media, working on Facebook. And then all of a sudden you come to the realization that you're not where you are. You're somewhere else. And a lot of that is because, again, our lives become completely out of control. And so we live in this guilt in our lives. And, and I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to pick on women today, but I, one thing I've learned about women is they, women say yes to everything, most of them. You know, if somebody needs something done, they'll raise their hand. And the reason is because they know they're the best at doing it, some of them. Some of you on this call are leaders. Many of you are leaders. Therefore, if somebody needs to be the president of the PTA, you raise your hand because you know there's no question in your mind you're going to do the best job because you're made to be a leader. You have the DNA of leadership. So you'll raise your hand for that job or the booster president or the team mom for Middle League or the room mom for school. And those are all things that we all want to be able to do. And those are all things we're excited about doing. But all of a sudden, we find ourselves in the process of doing that. We find ourselves that our lives are out of control. Most of you, if you think about, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but most of you think about what you do every day, 24 hours a day. And if you think back a year ago, you would have never thought you would be doing as much as you're doing every single day. It's kind of like the chameleon. We just slowly change colors, which we slowly add more to our life. And the problem is, as we add to our life and the things that we have to do every single day, we're, we're in the process of that. You, you can't ever say yes to one thing without saying no to another. Because we're just not capable of doing all of the things that we want to, we want to do. We're just not humanly capable of it. And the second part of that is we don't, we shouldn't be doing it right now. You know, life is not going to stop so you can build your beach body business. You know, you've added this to what you already do. 
You know, it's an addition. It's I need to find 10 to 15 hours a week to build my business. I need to find eight to 10 hours a week to build my business, whatever that is. And, and we look at that and we just, we, you know, we, we look at our life and everything seems to be out of control. And we're trying to get husband time. And we're trying to get kid time. And we're trying to get beach body time. And if you work, you have to have your time at work. And so all of these things become this, this spinning plate in our, in our lives, or it becomes this complete, almost a, a tornado in our minds all the time because we just feel like our lives are out of control. And we're the kind of people, all of us that have the DNA, all of us that know we're, that we're supposed to be leaders, we, we become frustrated because in the back of our minds, we absolutely know without a doubt that we, we need to be organized because there's so much we need to do. And there's so much we need to accomplish. And I think a lot of that goes back to their DNA again. You know you've been created to do something great. You know you've been created to do something significant. You know that you have purpose and huge dreams and unbelievable things you want to do with your life. And all of that's true, but the problem is we don't get some of them done and we don't move towards the very things that we want to do because we don't have time to do it or because we're not good at it. We, by the time we get to do what we need to do, that's the most biggest priority in our life, we're exhausted. We don't even have the strength to do it. Many of us go to bed at night and our minds never go to sleep because we don't know what we're supposed to do the next day and because we can't remember. Because everything we do when it comes to uh, managing our life isn't written down in a calendar, it's in our mind. And that's one of our biggest mistakes. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes about using a calendar and using it effectively and using it every day and become committed to it and become disciplined with a calendar. And for a lot of us, that's a difficult thing because we've never done that. You know, a lot of you have calendars from 2009 that you could sell for new. They have nothing written in them. You bought them with the idea in mind that I'm going to go out and I'm going to, I'm going to get this calendar. I'm going to use it every day and I'm going to become effective and it's going to be the discipline of my life. And I've got to look at it every day and I can't do other things. These are the things and we never do that. And then we get two year old calendar. We look at the same and it looks about the same. Or maybe we've entered two or three things in it. Well, hopefully by the time we're off this call today, we're going to change that in our life. Because I can honestly say to every one of you on this call, until you organize your time and you use a calendar effectively, and you manage your life effectively, you're never going to be big in this business. It won't be possible for you. You're, you're not humanly able to do it because you need to sleep some hours, right? So here's what I want you to do. You have, you all have an assignment today. You can do it while we're talking. If some of you are at work and you can't do it, you need to take out, you need to take a piece of paper and you need to fold it down the middle. And on one left-hand side of it, you need to write the word priorities, okay? On the other side, you need to put real life. This is what I'm really doing in my life. So on one side, we have priorities of our life. And on the other side, we have real life, what we do every day. Now, I'm going to challenge you on the left side. Now, if you're married, I would do this together. You know, if you're building this business together, great. Do it together. I mean, separately, but together. But I come up with your priorities, especially if you're married. If you're not married, you're single. What are your priorities? And be serious about them. If your priorities in your life is financial independence, if your priority in your life is to get out of debt, if your priority in your life is your family, if your priority in your life is a spiritual side of your life, whatever that is, you're probably only going to come up with three or four. Because those are really what make our priorities of our life. And we're going to write those on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we're going to write down what we do every day of our life. Okay, from the time you get up in the morning, seven days a week, what does your life look like? Like, uh, attend church, teach a Bible study, uh, teach four turbo classes, um, coach Little League. Whatever it is, write all those things down on the right-hand side of the page. And it's going to take you some time because I know you people are active people. You're busy people. You raise your hand because you have the DNA. You know you want to do it. And so on the right-hand side, I want you to write down real life. What's the real life for me? What is? What am I doing? You know, I'm in a carpool. Whatever it is, write those down on the right-hand side. Now, here's what I want you to do. Now, this is going to be the tough part for some of you. I want you to take a red pen, and I want you to look at your priorities on the left-hand side, and I want you to look at your real life on the right-hand side, and I want you to start taking a red pen and put red X's next to the things on the right side that don't match your priorities on the right, on the left side. Let me give you an example. If on the left side, you write financial independence, get out of debt, right? Bring my husband home from work, me quit my job. If that's part of your priority on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you're teaching five turbo classes or you're, you're coaching a, a little league team or you're coaching three club teams or you're, you're the PTA president, or you're the booster president, or you're the team mom, or you're the, you're the, you're the uh, a homeroom mom, then you have to look at your life right now and say, is this the time for me in my life to be doing these things? Because I have to challenge you and tell you, if you're in debt, if you financially don't know if you're going to make it in the next six months, if you're at a place in your life where you know that, that your husband could lose his job or you might not have a job, if, you, if this is all true about your life, then there's some things on the right-hand side that don't belong in your life right now. 
And I know for some of us that's hard because we want to do those things. You know, our kids are six years old or five years old and, you know, they have T-ball and you want to be the team mom because that, you love that. You love organizing. You love bringing stuff, the, the, the refreshments. I know you love all that stuff. But the problem is when you have a beach body that can be built and you can take an extra four hours a week or an extra eight hours a week away from the time that you would be, um, you know, being the team mom, then you have to look at what your life's all about right now and where it is that you want to be. And that's a tough struggle for a lot of us. And I know it's an emotional thing, but let me tell you about the emotional part of decisions in our lives. When decisions are made on emotion, most of the time within 24 to 48 hours, we regret them because we made a quick decision. You know, so who can do this? And you raise your hand and then you go home and you go, oh my gosh, and you look at your life and you go, there's no way in a million years I should be doing this. And then you do it anyway, because you told somebody you would, because you do have character and you do have integrity. But when your life's based on priorities and your life's disciplined to those priorities, then when a decision comes up to be made, it's not an emotional decision. It's a no. We need to learn to say, no, I can't do that right now. Because it's not, it's not a hard decision for us because we know that we are in debt. We know that we financially can't make it. We know that we need freedom in our lives. We know that, that, that we're almost unhealthy because we, we spend so many hours working. What can free us up from that? So I think for a lot of us, we're going to look at the right-hand side of that page and it's going to slap us right in the face. And for a lot of us, it's going to be difficult decisions. And some of them are going to be delayed gratification. You know, I remember when I got in the business in 1979, I got in network marketing and I was working all day in construction and all that as a cop, but I still found four nights a week to play softball because I love soft, I love baseball and stopped playing, so I love playing softball. And then all of a sudden, I started looking at my life and said, I'm $250,000 in debt, and I'm playing softball four nights a week. That's three hours a game. That's three times four. That's 12 hours a week I could put into my business. What am I doing? That's not a good decision. And see, we're not good on delayed gratification. Most of us want it now. If we want to do this, we want to do it now. We don't want to wait to be able to teach the Bible study. We don't want to wait to be able to do this. We don't want to wait to go on this mission trip because we need to do it right now. Well, you know what? Maybe some of these things you don't deserve to do yet. You haven't earned the right yet to do some of these things. And I know that might, might some of you, that might not sit good in your gut. What do you mean earn the right? I mean earn the right because you're financially broke. Earn the right because you have unbelievable stress in your life over finances. You know, unbelievable, um, earn the right because you have this position in your life where you, you guys can't even spend time together and enjoy your time together. And so as you look at that and we start to look at those priorities on the right hand side that we all face, it's life. That's called life, real life. That's life. But part of life that comes our way that we can't do anything about, we deal with, with an attitude. We, you know, we deal with what comes our way. Life's not going to stop so you can build a beach body business. You know, all the challenges are going to come, are going to come. You know, you're either in the midst of a struggle coming out of one or you're going to get one tomorrow. That's life. We can't change that. But what we can change is the things we do every single day that have nothing to do with our priorities or that aren't rolling us forward so that we can get free. You know, so I gave up a lot of things in my life that I love doing. And within three and a half years at age 32, I was making seven figures in, the, in, in network marketing. And then I could live life any way I chose to live it. But I didn't deserve being $250,000 in debt. I didn't deserve to do a lot of things at that time in my life. But, you know, delayed gratification we struggle with. If I said to a young child, here's a jelly bean, you can have one today or you can have 25 tomorrow, every kid's going to take one today. That's how we grew up. That's how we're born. I mean, that's how we live is we live without delay. We want it now. That's why credit card debt goes through the roof. People want it now. They don't want to pay a price for it. They don't want to wait for it. But when it comes to our priorities in our lives, some of us on that right side, they're not matching the left side. And if you're really committed to whatever those three or four are on the left side, you're going to have to start crossing some of those things out and together as a couple and as an individual. And I know there are things you like doing, but you know what? Liking them doesn't make that much difference right now. Because those of you that commit to this business, those of you that put the hours in this business and you put it in consistently, you've got to remember you're not trading time for money like you are in a job. You're investing in your life. You're investing in this business. So at the end of one year in this business, you don't start over the next year. You start at where you left off. You don't have to go re-earn that same amount of money. You know, if I built three houses in one year, I start January the next year, and I didn't have three houses to build, I couldn't go back and get paid for the three I did. If they were gone over with, I had to start over. In this business, you don't. So some of you need to see the value of time in, in this business and the value of what time can do because time is your asset. Your time is your, your greatest asset in this business because it does take time to build this business. You know, it's going to take, it's going to take, um, 
you know, days and hours and, and months. And, you know, the business, you, I don't care if you go diamond in 30 days, you're still a 30 day diamond. It needs to mature. It needs to grow. So hours become your greatest asset in this business. And if we don't have enough hours because we're not disciplined enough, we're not organized enough and we're not, we don't prioritize our life enough, then don't ever tell anybody we don't have time. Just tell people that I've chosen to do other things rather than this business. So if you're going to say this business is for you and you're committed to it and you're a leader and you're downline and your people in your group know that you're a leader and that you're growing this business, if you're going to say that and it comes out of your mouth, then live that every single day. So for a lot of us, this is a starting point. We've got to write the priorities and we got to go to the right side of the page and we got to take the reality of our life and we got to start crossing some of those things off. Now, some of them are commitments you have for 30 days or 60 days. I understand that, right? <clears throat> but, I, you know, I met a girl the other day and she takes shop, she takes three classes a day. She works out three times a day in these classes. She takes four days a week. And that was on her real, real side. And I said, what's your priority? She said, I got to be a five-star diamond in Beachbody. I said, well, how does this match your priority? How does three classes, four classes a day you're taking because you want to be in great shape and you look great, you are in great shape, but how do those, how does that match your priorities of financial independence of building your Beachbody business to five-star? And I didn't need to answer it for her. She knew the answer. It didn't match up. So she decided that she needed to change some of those things and make a difference and get rid of some of those things that she's doing where she could be putting time and effort in her business. And so, you know, life doesn't stop for you, but you can change some things and make decisions of, and, and move away from some of the things we're doing so that our priorities are really true to ourselves. Because if you're true and, and, you, and those are your priorities and you're, and you're committed to them and you're disciplined with those things, like I said, the, the no's don't become hard. If someone, if I know that I'm spending this amount of time building my business and some, and I only have five things going on the outside that I have to do besides be with my kids and be with my husband and make them happy and, you know, do all the things that are my priority as a woman or priority as a man. Okay. If, if then, if somebody comes to me and says, Craig, I really want you to teach this Bible study or Craig, I really want you to coach this team. All I had to do was look down at my priority list and say, I can't do that. The answer is no, I would love, I'm going to be able to do it in about 24 months, but I can't right now. You know, and I know my son will be two years older, but that's the way it is because I got to get out of debt. I got to get free. I got to get some security for my family. I got to know my family. I got to know my husband can come home from work in two years or he may not live for the next five because of the stress in his life. So we start looking at those total priorities differently. And that brings me to the calendar. Every one of you need a calendar, not a Blackberry, not an iPhone, not something that you can pull up on your uh, electronically. You need a hard copy calendar that you can open and look at every single day, every day. Because if you fill your calendar out the night before you go to bed with everything you have to do the next day, you close your eyes, you go to sleep because you don't have to think about, do I have a doctor appointment? What time does Johnny need to get there? What time do I pick up the kids? What time do I, am I doing that appointment with that girl to show this business? What's, what's my period of time I'm supposed to do my exposures? Oh, I'm supposed to be with my husband tomorrow night. All that's going through your mind because none of it's written down. You know, we need to become calendar disciplined. It's the only way I ever built my business. I had too many things going. I had, you know, construction and I was bidding this job and doing this and I had police work and I had training and I had this. And you know what? I had to take a calendar and open it up. And it's a calendar you need to be able to look at. You need to be able to open it up. And if you're a couple, I'll talk in a few minutes about a meeting you're going to have weekly where you look at each other's calendar. You see what's in there. You know your life. Because when you use a calendar effectively, your life's in front of you every day. And you become disciplined to that. And you don't waver from that. And so once you get a calendar, what you need to do is you need to use it. And let me talk about how you do that. What I used to do on Sunday nights is I wrote my calendar out for the week, everything I had to do. And I even, I even color coded it. Okay. So the time I was a police officer at that time, I had black. So I colored in black. I wrote that, you know, whether it was from 10 o'clock at night till seven in the morning, that time, there was nothing else I could do during that time. It was in my calendar every day, except my days off. And I knew that was nothing else could be done during that time. Right. Then I had to write in my, Amway time. Okay. For you, it's beach body time. That was in red. I mean, that was in green because it was go, 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 fill, fill, fill. So in green, I wrote from eight to 10 every single night or eight to actually it was from seven 30 to nine 30 because I had to be to work at 10. That was my time to build a business. That was all that time I had. And then on Saturdays, I, I, I spent most of my day building my business. So most of the Saturday was green and Sundays I usually took off until about six in the evening and it turned green again. And I started doing my business again, but those were written in. Okay. Then I had to, then I had to write the other things that I was doing. So for you, when you think about it, tomorrow if you have kid time, what color is it? Write it in your calendar. Tomorrow if you have beach body time, put it in your calendar. It's green or whatever color you want to use. Now you might not even have an appointment in that spot yet. 
You might have thir- you might have Friday of this week. You might have green from two to four in the afternoon. That's the time you know you have to build your beach body business. You have no other time that day because you have to pick up the kids. You have that night. You have a date night with your husband. So that's in what you can make it red, like a heart, whatever color you want. But that's date night. We're going out from six. We'll be out till ten at night. Right? That's red. That's your date night. That's nothing takes the place. Nothing gets into the place of that. And then we put in your, your, so you put your colors in there. So if I've got green, if you're green on this coming Friday from two to four, you might not even have an appointment in Beachbody yet then. But you know when you go to your calendar and somebody calls you up, a coach and says, I've got somebody I want you to show this business to, can you meet with us? Then you look at Friday and it's already established. Yeah, I have from two to four on Friday. Will that work for you? And if they say, oh, that won't work, can we do, uh, say, six o'clock? And all of a sudden you look at your calendar, oh, no, six to ten's husband time. And all of a sudden you say, well, let me talk to my husband. I, maybe I can change some things so I can meet with you. You've just discredited your husband, devalued your husband, and, you, and you've taken away the time that you set aside for that. Unless you're disciplined with your calendar, you're out of control. Because what happens, you can never be where you are. Because if you know your time on Friday is green from 2 to 4, you know during that time that that's your beach body time. That's what you fill in there. Whatever comes up this week, that's the only time you have. On Wednesday, what's your beach body time? Put it in green. On Thursday, what's your beach body time? Put it in green. So when somebody calls you up on Monday to do something Thursday, you don't. You can look at your calendar and see, okay, here's my kid's time, here's here's my um, whatever else, you know, here's my workout time, here's my husband time, here's my business time, here's my job time. They're all in the calendar. So you don't have to try to figure out, well, let me see if I can switch this around, I'll change this, I'll do this, I'll do that. Don't do that. It's like a friend of mine flies uh, F-16 jets, right? And he told me, he said, Craig, when you're flying at however many miles an hour they fly, almost the speed of sound, He said, the only thing you could possibly do is look at your instruments. You can't look around. You can't look up. You can't look out of the cockpit. I mean, you can see out of it. But if you ever try to fly by looking anywhere, you're going to crash. Because you can be flying upside down and not even know it. He said, you look at your instruments, you keep your eye on your instruments, and you never take them off. In our business, in our life, to manage our time, to manage our calendar, we have to stare at our hours, and we have to look at them, and we have to put things in place for the week that we're going to do on Sunday night, and we don't waver from them. We, they're like the instruments. Even though emotional things come up, even though someone calls you and says, gosh, if you could just spend time with this coach at this time, it would change his life. You know, I look at it and go, it's kid's time. Can't do it. Really sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't work my calendar this week. And you know what that's going to do for you with peace of mind? That's going to mean when you're at a little league field watching a game or a soccer field or you're at your son's high school football game, you're there. You're where you are. If you're spending time with your spouse, you're where you are. If you're with your beach body business, you're where you are. Once you live life that way, discipline than the whole idea in mind of, of being guilty all the time. Women are guilty all the time, you know, and men too, but women spend time that when they're with their kids, they're thinking about something else. And then they feel guilty after they spent the time because they never engaged in it. They take them to the park to, to play in the slides and the gym in the gym and, and they can't go push them on the, uh, push them on the, on the swing or on the, because they're texting or they're thinking about someplace else they should be. Shame on you. That's not peace of mind. But if you control your calendar, you can be where you are, right? And, and that's going to be the biggest transformation for some of you. But you've got to get a calendar and one you can open. And let me tell you another reason why your calendar is going to be important. You know, I'm going to sit down with some coaches in, in, in Chicago in the next two days. And you know what? If you're on this call and you're one of those coaches, bring your calendar because I want to see it. I want to see what you do every day. I want to see what your calendar looks like. If you want to get counsel from your upline in this business, and get help in from people that are building this, or from people that are above you that are building the business. If you want time with me, my first question will be bring your calendar, right? And don't tell me it's on your BlackBerry. I can't see it. I want to see it in front of me. I want you to open it up. I want you to put it out there, right? Because I want to be able to counsel you, and I can't counsel you till you write down. If this was your beach body time, write down what did you do during that time? If you did an exposure, what happened during that exposure, right? Get control of your calendar. Use your calendar as almost like a journal, so that you get help from your upline. To sit down with you and just try to remember what you did last week, that doesn't help me. I can't help you, right? So I sat down with a coach recently in Orange County, and in fact, it was three months ago, and I got her on this calendar thing, and she was out of control. Her life was out of control, and she's an incredible coach, and she's awesome, and she's tearing the business up. But her life, she sat there literally crying, saying, I life's out of control. I got kids. I got a husband. I got this. I do this. I train these classes. I teach this. I teach this. I said, your life's out of control because you choose it to be. You're making that choice in your life. So long story short, over the last 60 days, she bought a calendar. She's effective. She's using it. She's last time I met with you, I'm, I've never been happier in my life. I feel, and there's no more guilt. I'm where I am. Thank you. Right? So we opened her calendar. And she said, well, I kind of had a tough month because I meet with her once a month. She said, I had a tough month because 
I, I don't think much happened in my business. And I said, oh, really? Well, open your calendar. So she did. I said, here's a red pen. Circle every creative moment you had. She said, what do you mean? Every time you saw a new face, that's creative. Whether it's an exposure, a presentation, a new customer, at a fit club, whatever it is, how many times this month, circle on your paper, because did you work the business? Because I worked it five days a week for four weeks. I said, that's 20 days. Okay, so you got 20 days in here. Circle the red, with a red pen, circle the creative days you had, right? So she went through and she took some time and I'm drinking a, uh, a glass of water and she said there and all of a sudden she, she turns over and she throws it back to me. You know how many circles she had? Three. There were only three days that she spent creating business. The other 17 days she spent managing her business, calling the same person again, trying to help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. You know, Larry says, work with a willing, right? She's working with a non-willing. And we looked at that and what a great breakthrough for her. Because I said, next month when I meet with you, I want to see, you know, at least three, every day, I want to see red circles. Because if we create every day, our business grows. If we manage every day, it stays stagnant. It doesn't move forward. So if I hadn't seen the calendar, if she hadn't been effective on that calendar, if I didn't have something to look at, trust me, I could have never been effective with her counseling her and helping her in the business. So that's another reason you need a calendar, a real calendar in front of you, right? It also will reveal your wasted time. If you look at a calendar, as you start to use it, as you start moving forward on these Sunday night, you know, uh, preparing your wig, writing in your times, you know, work, you know, again, husband time, work time, workout time, kid time, as you start filling those out, what the, what those spots are in your calendar for the week. And again, there may not even be something in there. You might have Wednesday, let's see, when could, well, the kids get out of school at three, I'm going to spend four to five with my kids on Wednesday, just one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you might not even have an activity written in there yet. You just know that that color for that hour circled in your calendar, that color, whatever that represents your kids, that color is their time. So when someone calls you for that time, don't give it to them. They don't get it. Nobody else gets it. Your kids get it. Right? That shows them value. That shows them priority. And when you're with them, shut your phone off and sit and listen to what they have to say and look them in the eye and watch their game and enjoy their game. Right? Because I'll tell you what, this is a business we can do 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Right? And you know what? Mentally, a lot of us do that. And that's okay. When you're obsessed with a dream and you need to get what this business offers, I understand that, right? But at the same time, if we don't fly by our instruments, if we don't discipline ourselves to our calendar, then trust me, we're, we're going to be out of control. And when you're out of control, you're not happy. And if you're not happy, no one wants to be in business with you, right? You bring people in this business and they see your life absolutely out of control. And they think, I don't want that. There's no way in a million years I want to add something to my life and do and look how my life look like yours. Right? So it's not even a testimony to them. I wanted to people to always know that, hey, I'm busy, but I'm busy organized. I know what I've got going on. I'm not just, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. I'm not, oh, geez, i got to get a babysitter for this. i got to go get this. Oh, my God. And, this. and we talk this way all the time. You think that's attractive for bringing people in your business? How many people want that in their life? It's like, oh, you're living a nightmare. Oh, I'll, oh, I think I'll join it. I mean, that's not the way we need to live our life. And I don't care what business you're in. It doesn't matter what you do, what business you're in. The difference in our business is you're doing everything you did before and you're adding more. But if we go to our priority list and the right side, we're going to find that we can eliminate a bunch. And you need to be disciplined enough and committed enough to your dreams, your goals, your priorities, to start eliminating those things in your life. And when you do it, you're going to be much happier. Okay, let me talk about one more thing and then I'm going to kind of wrap up here. Those of you that are married, okay, you need to have a meeting every week. Okay, I don't care if your spouse is in the business or not, you need a meeting every single week. Because let me tell you, if you're building this business, you're a DNA person, most likely. If you're a DNA person, your life is just busy, busy, busy. Now, getting it organized is going to help a bunch, but you're still going to be a busy person. That's the way you live your life. And what we do, if, we're, if, if both of us are extremely busy in a relationship, we spend the whole week going, 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 going. We do have priority time we put down, time we put together. But one of the things we need to know as a spouse is we need to know that sometime this week, I'm going to get to see that FaceTime with you. And I'm going to get to talk to you face to face. And when it comes to this stuff I'm going to talk about right now, I'm not even sure your date night's the time to do it. That's the time to be together and enjoy each other. But the Sunday night meeting is viable for you guys. It's vital. It's important. It's non-negotiable. And what you do is if you know, especially women, if you know that there's a time this week that I can say what I need to say and something that bothered me on Tuesday, and if I know Sunday night I can say it, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to blow it up. I'm not going to throw it out. How many times have we said something when maybe you go, oh, I wish it probably wasn't the right time to say that, but I'm just so frustrated. I had to say it, and you know, the kids are around, everything blows up. Okay, This is going to help you with that. And so Sunday night you need to have a business meeting. Right? And here's what the meeting entails. Let's say the kids are down. I don't know what time that is for you. I don't know what age kids all of you have, but let's say it's 7.30 in the evening. Let's say it's 8 o'clock. So on Sunday night, I have a business meeting with my spouse. 
And here's what that meeting entails. The very first thing, you sit in a chair across from each other, you look each other in the eye, and one of you gets to talk. And all you do is say, okay, tell me what you, what you need to share with me. Right? And it's not attacking. It's not. It's just, let me tell you some of the things that happened this week that I wish hadn't happened. Let me tell you some of the things that happened in my life that I needed to talk to you about. And they may not even be about them. It's just things you wish you could have told them. Something to do with the kids. Something to do with school. And because you're both so busy, you haven't had an opportunity to do that. So now... Oh, awesome. And maybe you've even written them down in your calendar what you want to talk about Sunday night. I always did. I just write down, oh, oh I got to cover this, I got to cover this, I got to cover this. And maybe if something happened that week that bothered you, just note it, make a note of it. Not that most women don't remember these things because they do, but let's just say you, okay, so if I'm sitting across from you and you're my spouse, you, I say, okay, tell me what I need to hear. And you have open air to talk as long as you want. And I'm not going to butt you or yap at you or defend myself. I just want to hear what you have to say. And I'm going to absorb it. I'm going to listen to it. Okay? Then when you're done, I get to share. Because I'm sure I have some feelings about stuff that went on that week. So now I get whatever amount of time I need to share myself. Okay, now what have we done? We've cle- we begin to clear the air. Now I'm, not, now I'm not saying things that come up during the week that need to be handled immediately. I'm not talking about that. So I'm talking about stuff that, that we let build up and build up and build up and little things and little things that bother you and something you wanted to say and, and you didn't get the chance. So you got frustrated. And all this builds up and all of a sudden two weeks, three weeks in, somebody, you know, you sit down and your spouse is telling you about something that happened three weeks ago that drove her crazy or drove him crazy. And you're going, how did that happen? Right? But if we have these, these communication times on Sunday nights, they become an outlet. They become a freedom, a freedom for us and a resource for us to be able to get rid of some of these things because we want to build a big business. And because we're so active doing everything else in our life, we have to hold on to that time. And it has to be written in our calendar. That's our time. Nobody's getting it. Nobody's coming over for dinner. Nobody at every Sunday night at this time, right? As many Sunday nights as we can, this is our time. Okay, the second part of that meeting is we open our calendars. Yes, we both have them, right? We write in what we need for the week. I say to you as my spouse, what do you need from me this week? And you might say, I really need you to pick up the kids on Thursday. Can you do that? And I, I've been taking the baseball practice. And I look at my calendar and say, yes, I can. I write in my calendar. Great. It's done. It's done. It's in my calendar. You don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, I need you to do this. Great. What do you need from me emotionally? Right? You know, ask those questions and have your calendar open and have a journal page and write these things down. It's showing value to one another. It's showing we appreciate one another because we have dreams. We have goals. We want to accomplish great things. But us being together on the same team, going the same direction, whether we're all in the same business or not, doesn't matter. we got to be on the same team. And if we're working against one another and if we create resentments because of this business, we're never going to be successful. Because I don't care how successful you're going to be, if your family's not intact, when you get there, it's not a, it's not, it's not a great end of the journey. And so we ask each other, what do, you need, you know, what do you need from me this week? We write it down, right? Boom, now we're ready to start our week. We've cleared the air. You know, whatever could be deci- uh, you know, resolved is resolved. If there's things that need to be worked on, okay, I'm going to work on that this week. I promise you. And you know what? That's the time to say, I need a little, need a little more affirmation from you. Just a, a little more. Okay, great. No problem. You write that in your calendar. I mean, that sounds crazy. But why not? Why not write it down? This is my task. You know, I need to affirm my wife every single day. Three times a day, I'm gonna write it in my calendar. This is, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna check it off. Because what, it puts value on the other person. And so if we have those meetings every single Sunday night, then we open our calendars, we fill our calendars for the week, kid time, husband time, work time, workout time, beach body time, in, in place, written in squares, colors if you want, and now you know how you attack your week. And now as you make your phone calls to build appointments, you know your beach body time that you have for appointments. If, you're, if you know you have other things to do, they're in your calendar. You get control of your life. You know, you begin to realize that, that, that you know, now it's not, it's not controlling me, okay? I'm controlling it, right? And so when it comes to our managing our time, you guys, and managing our lives, you haven't been given, you've been given a dream for a reason. But God gave us 168 hours in a day. At least that's my belief. Okay, we've been given, that's the earth. You know, that's how many hours we have on this earth that was created. If that's all we have, then how effective are we in those 168 hours? I guess that's my question. And I think for all of us, including the guy talking on this phone, because I'm speaking, you know, from your, from me to you to my ears, is if we'll take charge of our lives and begin to discipline our lives, we stop worrying about the future and we live for today because we're effective every day. And that's why I tell people, write 10 things down a day you're gonna do in this business every day and do them. Do them every single day and check them off in your calendar book, in your notebook. But if you guys will take some of the stuff I've talked about today and you'll write that priority list, and you'll write the priorities on your left side, and you'll write the real, real life on the right side. 
And if you're married, you'll come in as a couple to start, start crossing some of those things off on the right side. Because you know how many times we say, I just don't have enough time with my spouse. I don't have enough time with my kids. I don't have enough time for my beach body business. I don't have enough time to work out. That's absolutely an untrue statement. You have time for all of those things. You just aren't organized enough to get the satisfaction and the enjoyment and to be able to be where you are with all of those things. So let me, I want to read one, one, one uh, thing I just found recently. I think I said it out in one of my morning texts, or maybe you've already heard it, but it says this, and this is profound to me. It says, anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but it empties today of its strength. That is such a powerful statement. Anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but it only empties today of its strength. Those of us that are worried about tomorrow and worried about the next day and worried like our life's out of control. What am I going to do tomorrow? How am I going to build my business? How is it going to succeed? You know, we can't control what's going to happen tomorrow. We, we can't go out and say, I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to feel sorrow. I don't want to be sad, right? We can't, you know, we can't empty tomorrow of those sorrows. But if we worry about those things apart from just today, then we zap all the strength out of our life today. And that's not what I want for you guys. And so I want your strength to, to become your discipline and your time management and work in a calendar. And I know for us sanguines, because that's what I am, you guys, I know that's not easy because we like spontaneity. We like to just play. We like to just let her roll. We like to just, whatever happens, happens. You can't live like that way and be good at anything. You want to be a good mom? Get discipline. You want to be a good dad? Get discipline. You want to be good at beach body? Get discipline. You want to be a good workout person? Get discipline. It's all about discipline in our lives. And we're disciplined in so many areas. And then but if we look at the bigger area of our life about how we work, what we spend our 160 hours a week doing, we're out of control. And for us that have the DNA, out of control is not good because we get someplace to go, someplace we need to be, and something great we need to do with our lives. And so I believe for all of you, if you'll prioritize your life, take charge of your time, take and manage your time appropriately, you'll be able to, you'll be able to eliminate the, the, the anxiety that you have every single day which when you wake up with anxiety, worried about tomorrow, you can't be used today to its fullest. You can't live to it today with its greatest passion. And you realize that your strength is zapped because all you're doing is worried about the future. And you know what? None of us can do a thing about it, but we can do something about today. So live today, live your hours, live your moments, live your minutes to its fullest and go out and do some phenomenal, great things with your lives. So thanks for listening again this week, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Boom. All right. Who wants to share their top takeaway from that call? I think you guys are all muted. I was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> who was that? Nobody? So who wants to share their top takeaway? Get <laughs> organized. After that that little my top tip. Go for it. Uh, I was just going to say, get organized was the biggest thing that I saw or heard. Scheduling. I'm sure you like that call. Yeah, I did a lot. <laughs> nice. Good. Cool. Anyone else have an aha moment or a big takeaway? Top I love the way he talked about like priorities versus real life and if it's actually helping you. Yeah. I think it's important to actually like do that activity. I liked what he said about when he said, when you discipline your time, you no longer have to worry about the future. Um, I've been doing that this week. I got back into my calendar. It's really funny that he said this because I scheduled like my Sunday night hour or two block to go through my calendar. And then every night I go through and write my to-do list for tomorrow. Um, I'm just kind of getting back into it. But the last three, four days that I've been doing it, 
have been like super low stress because I just know what to do every day. It's like, oh, why don't I do this more often? <laughs> so it's just kind of nice to hear him say that. It's amazing how much stress it takes out of your life when you have a list of the things you need to do and you write them down the night before so that you can go to bed calm because you don't have to think about how many different things you have to do. They're all written down. And then the next day, you're not jumping around. You just kind of are hitting your list. You know, it's gonna, it saves you so much time and you're so much more focused on what you need to, to be doing. You're not wasting as much energy trying to figure out what you should be doing. And the funny thing is like when we get stressed, the first we, we try to cut things out of our life because we're too stressed. And the things we cut out of our life are the things that we need to be doing the most when we're stressed, which is creating a list. You know, we're so stressed. We're like, I don't have time to create a list of the things I need to do. I got too much to do to make a list of the things I need to do. But that's what's going to help you get back on track. Same with when people get stressed, the things they cut out are their workouts, eating right. And then that just adds to the stress. So I think that having that list of things you need to, to do, and not only the list of things you need to do, but the time you're going to do it, I think that's really important too. The people that wake up and know what time they're going to work out, they usually work out. People that wake up and they're just going to work out when they can, the day gets away from them. Same with anything in life. You've got to set aside some time to work this business and stick to it. Guard that time with your life, you know, and then show up during that time. It's like you would show up to a job. If you wake up and, you're, and you say, I'm going to do my business when I have time today, you're never, it's, it's not going to get done. It's, and if it does get done, it's not going to get done with the same amount of efficiency and focus. Cool. Anyone else? I uh, did it on what Jenny just said um, about uh, using the calendar. I've been in waves going up and down using and not using and currently in a little bout of not using. So definitely stressed and freaking out um, about things. So like I swear my palms are sweating from this whole call. I feel like, like literally I'm struggling right now with every single thing that was just discussed um, and kind of having a down day about everything that was just discussed. So thank you because my palms are sweating for a good reason. I have four pages of notes in my calendar next to me. So I know what I'm doing when I get off. So <laughs> yeah. this was, awesome. this was made to hear it for me today. So yeah. And my family. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Like, and, and uh, even when you think you got things figured out, you're still going to have bad days. You just got to like accept that. And when those bad days come up, you got to stick to your routine. That's going to help you get back out of the bad days. But usually when people have those bad days, they're like, oh my God, why is this happening? And they're so focused on why is it happening? They're adding to that negativity when all they need to do is just accept it. Bad days come. That's part of life and stick to their their list of the things they need to do. And that's what's going to get them out of those bad days even quicker or bad weeks sometimes. It's life. It's going to happen. Anybody else? Uh, this is Annie. I'm driving, so I'm not looking. Um, I think it's really important for a lot of us, too, to be make sure that we're scheduling time with our family. I know it sounds stupid, but I have specific times with my family that I do not work this business. Like, 8 o'clock in the morning, I, that is, like, 8 to 9. I don't look at my phone. That's, like, getting my kids ready, um, doing what they, like, I need to do for them. And it makes me a lot less stressed because I'm not, like, constantly doing Beachbody 24-7. So it's, it's important to schedule those times for your family too in your, in your calendar. That's great. Yeah. I think like he said, it makes you like where you are is where you are versus like when you're with your family, you're thinking about Beachbody or when you're doing Beachbody, you're thinking about you should be with your family. But when you schedule that time and you have all the different parts of your life that you need to give time to and you have it scheduled out, then when you're with that whatever you're doing, you're there, plugged in. You're not worrying about the, the other thing because you have that other thing already scheduled out and you know you're going to get to it. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just be present. Right, and it's also important that you're, you're, if you have a spouse or whoever, like you need to be on the same page as them. You need to like schedule, you, let, you need to let them know your schedule so it's not, you know, 
that this is a priority, like Monday, Wednesday night from eight to nine, this is what I'm doing this so that they know. So um, it's a lot easier for you to run your business. And like when you're talking to your spouse, you don't say my business, you say our business, even if they're not working the business, because the business, the goal of the business is to, give, to provide for your family. So it's your business, not it's your family's business, not just yours, even if your spouse doesn't work it. That's funny that you said that because Caroline, I like posted my schedule one day and it was like gauge at 6 p.m. And she was like, do you really need to schedule gauge in? And I was like, yeah, I need to like organize everything and like have set days for things. Like Annie said, like Mondays and Wednesdays like are always beach body nights for me. So like I rarely will say yes to other things unless like absolutely needed. Um, and like Christy, who's on this call, we are talking about it and like being too much of like a yes girl, like saying yes to too many things and like putting way too many things on your plate and just then that become, makes you feel overwhelmed. So like you don't have to respond to like someone texts you and says like, do you want to go do this on this date? Like you don't need to respond right away and say like yes or no. Like you can think about it, see if it fits in your schedule and then like plan accordingly and stuff. So. Hey, Amy, along the lines of you, like, saying you schedule a gauge in or anyone else who does this. So I, like, for a while was saying, like, no team, like, I don't do calls on Friday. And then I kept having people be like, can we do a call on Friday? I can't do any other day. And I kept saying yes. But then I always felt like I'd be doing all those calls. And I was like, I wish I was with my friends. Do you have any days or anyone have any days where you just say, like, I will not do calls. It's, like, my own personal time or no? I and usually Thursday, Friday. Thursdays and Fridays, I usually say no. Okay. I don't schedule things on the weekends with people like for calls or anything um, unless it's like the next day and like I know I don't have anything going on but I don't tip I'll work on Beachbody but I'm not gonna like set a call with somebody okay I do my calls Sunday through Wednesday and then Thursday Friday are like my nights to myself to like do other things so I won't do any calls on Thursday Friday any beach Friday related calls okay Thank you guys. Anybody else? What'd you guys write down that stood out to you on the call that you took notes on? I, the thing I wrote down was, I wrote a couple things, but uh, I'm really guilty of this. Uh, the way you live your hours is the way you'll live your days. And the way you live your days is the way you'll live your life. And uh, the days, the, the way I live my hours when I don't have a list of the things I need to get done, I live those hours like just kind of all over the place. You know, not very focused because I don't have a list of the things I need to do because I'm just jumping over here and jumping over there. And then that's the way I treat those hours working my business is kind of how my day goes. It's just kind of a little bit of all over the place. And, that's, and if, if you get in that routine, that's how your life kind of, you just kind of all over the place in your life too. When I'm focused and I, and I set that schedule and I, and I live my hours focused, then my days are very focused and my life feels very focused um, in a good way, you know? So I think that's important that the, what he said, the way you live your hours is the way you live your days. And the way you live your days is the way you live your life. Um, so you got to ask yourself how you live your, you know, those two hours or that hour that, that you, uh, dedicate to your business. Um, and then the other thing I wrote down was when people say, I don't have time or, you know, I'll say, I don't have time. That's not, that's not true. What really is true is I've chosen to spend my time other on other things. Right. So it's not that you don't have time to build this business. It's you've chosen to spend that time doing other things and that's fine. Um, but then you got to ask yourself, you know, what you want your life to look like two years from now. And are the things you're, you're spending your time on right now going to get you to what you want your life to look like two years from now. And then uh, anxiety doesn't fix tomorrow. It just takes energy from today. I think a lot of people spend a lot of their time like worrying about what they should be doing and all that does is just drain their energy and it does it's very unproductive. But if you have a calendar and you have the list and, and it, 
of things you need to get done and you know what time you're going to get it done, then you have less anxiety because you, you're spending less time thinking about what you need to do and when you need to do it. It's all laid out and you can just put all your energy towards actually doing it versus worrying about when it's going to get done. More efficient. More peace. More in the moment. Presence. Anybody else? I like a hashtag calendar discipline. Calendar discipline. Uh, is something that resonated. And um, do not discredit or devalue what is already set. Just being a yes person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are big words, and that's what we do when we do those actions. So it's kind of a raw when you're like so fired up about building this business and you're really passionate and you're super, super excited about it, you'll take, when someone wants to talk to you, you'll talk to them whenever you want, but then you're going into the time that you scheduled for your family and you're doing them a disservice. So you gotta, you gotta, you know, schedule time for your family. It sounds weird, but it's so important that you do that. And then when people say, this is the only time I can do it, you got to say, I can't do it then. We'll have to do it next week because that, is what is my time with my family and I'm and I have to honor that and I want to honor that yeah like I don't know if on the national wake-up call Elizabeth Hark I can't remember that's her last name but she said when she wanted when she was enrolling as a coach she messaged her sponsor coach on a Sunday and he was like I can help you tomorrow get started tonight's like a family day for me I don't work on Sundays and she said that was like a huge deal to her and it set like the pace for her business and like having set days that she doesn't like do certain things on her business and is with her family and stuff. So. Yeah. That's great. How many of you like your biggest hurdle with this business is not having enough time? I feel like that's the number one hurdle that people have is they just they just don't they feel like they don't have enough time to, to build a business if they had more time they'd be farther along how many of you think you're going to be more efficient with your time now after listening to this call and actually putting it into action that's the key with everything in life you know there's so many things you listen to that are great but how often do you actually put it into action for a long period of time because that's really when it will pay off I think it's harder when you have all the time in the world. Like I feel like I was better when I was working full time because I, you have to be more disciplined. So I agree. yeah, that's why I just messaged you that. Yeah, yeah I was, was, was going to say the same thing because I'm. I know I'm going to have like all the time in the world to be like, oh, I have all day to do this, and then like yeah. never do I mean, it. You don't or schedule it out when you have all the time. The the day goes by really fast, and you can spend a lot of time doing things that you don't need to. Whereas when I was working full time. It was like, I only have this hour. Like I need to do this. I need to do this. And now like I have to be really disciplined. Otherwise it's like, Oh, I can sit on Facebook for an hour and do this and all. And then the day yeah. just gets away. You're just spending like more time doing the same things. Yeah. Funny, I, I got yeah. away from it, from scheduling things. When I was what? working full, when I, when I was working full time, I had everything scheduled for when I was going to work my beach body business and what I needed to do in order and when I had that time to do it, I knocked it out. But now I have all the time and I don't schedule my time as much and I get less done. <laughs> I, 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 I ditto that one, Amy. <laughs> I used to have two jobs. I worked, I had my own engineering company. I worked for the New York State DOT and I was uh, much more efficient with my time because I'd get up early in the morning, do my work, and I'd come home at night and I'd do my work. I had my little power hours in the morning and now I, I'm, I've got all day. <laughs> I, I burn up a lot of time. So yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. For those of you who are still working full time and doing this, um, compare your work week with your weekend and how chaotic your weekends are. You start doing this full time. It's the weekend all the time and you can just, you've got to stay organized. That's good. That's actually a good comparison. Yeah. Because like on a Saturday, it's funny. It is like some like even on a Saturday before it would be like, oh, I have like all day, and that's how every day <laughs> turns into. Um. Okay. 
Anyone else have something they wrote down or a takeaway they had that they didn't get to share yet? Uh, I don't. I had to go make my sweet potato crisp. I don't know why I mix this part. <laughs> but I think it was really good that, about talking about how you really need to get like a written planner. I have so many coaches who are like, oh, I can just plan on my phone. And I, and they, every, at the end of every day, they're like, I just didn't get anything done. And I'm like, you really need to, you don't even have to, like, I don't know. I think written down planner. I don't know. I just have so many coaches who just do it in like the notepad of their phone and try to schedule calls on that and then put their to-do list, put their BAT all on like one notepad of their phone. And they think it's organized, but then they get to the end of the day and they're like, I don't even, I didn't get half of this done. And I missed a call and things like that. My coaches that have like written planners and schedule every little thing do much better than the ones that keep it on their phone. Feels good to cross it out too. Oh, it feels so good to cross it off. I do so many things in the morning just so that I can cross it off. I think it's, um, yeah, I do that too, Caroline. I love crossing it off. I think it's also helpful to pair up with people and text each other your to-do lists. Um, and it helps me stay more accountable. Like I'll text it to like two other girls. We're on a text message. I'm like, here's my to-do list. And then they'll text me theirs. And then sometimes like I'll miss something on mine and add it on. So it keeps you accountable. Cool. Anyone else have a time management tip that's been working for them? Hey, guys. It's Marie. I just I just got on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, hey. Sorry, I'm in my car. Um, well, one of the things that I do for time management is um, I go ahead. I put everybody that I have in all my like challenge groups. Like I write it out all the people that I'm going to check in with every day. And then um, for time management, basically follow Amy's to do list that she has in the coach files. Um, and then like Caroline and everyone said, I just go ahead and cross it off. And today, like, I finally got through all my follow-ups and everything. So all I really had to do was, like, keep recruiting and doing that. And it feels good when I finally get to that point around, like, Wednesday, Thursday, where I can just, like, really focus on invites and checking in with my personally sponsored coaches. So um, I come up with my plan the night before. Because if I don't come up with it the night before, you know, at least one day out of the week, out of seven days, like I'm just scatterbrained. Like I don't even have a focus if I don't have it written out the day before and I don't have a clear, concise plan, um, you know, to follow. Because you guys pretty much already have an amazing plan and system like in Team Boom. So I just kind of stick with that and then it just works out. <laughs> that helps me manage pretty much. So. Yes. It's important talking about that, how important it is to write it down the night before and then just knock it out the next day. Like, if I'm laying there at night and thinking about it, I'm like, why am I in bed? Like, I'm not done, you know? And then I'm worrying about it. So I, like, get, I start writing it down and just plan it out. So I'm starting to color coat things now with highlighter, so it's getting kind of cool. 